Well, this is exciting. Midjourney has released version 5.2, and not only has the overall image fidelity and aesthetic improved over 5.1, but we now have a number of amazing and frankly long awaited features to add to our tool belt. We're going to take a look at those. Plus, I've got some super pro tips for you and some really early interesting experiments that I think will inspire you. OK, let's dive in. So first off, you're actually already running version 5.2. It's actually set on by default. And we do still have a raw mode, much the same way that we did with version 5.1. Like in version 5.1, the raw mode is, I don't wanna say less imaginative, but maybe a little more subtle than the standard 5.2. Additionally, you'll note that we have two new options with high variation mode and low variation mode. It is set to high by default. I would recommend just leaving it there. We're gonna take a look at the difference between high and low in just a minute as well. And apparently Midjourney's language model has been slightly improved as well, which will help it understand exactly what you're after. There's a really cool, interesting feature coming up in just a bit that's gonna showcase that. Okay, so let's take a look at a direct comparison between version 5.1 and version 5.2. Just a few days ago in my video on prompting, we did uh, our guy in a blue business suit. Uh, the prompt here was a photograph, long shot, businessman walking down a busy city street, blue color palette with an aspect ratio of 16.9. This is the same prompt in version 5.2. And I gotta say, I am super impressed. The overall image quality and fidelity is really, really increased. I think the model of the business businessman looks significantly better than it did in 5.1, which is actually saying a lot because the 5.1 one was really good as well. I did call out for a blue color palette and that still exists, but it's not quite as overdone as it was in version 5.1. It's kind of toned back a little bit. This was kind of a problem that I had with version 5.1. I felt that in the standard mode, the colors always looked a little too oversaturated, a little too uh, hyper realistic. Whereas in version 5.1 raw, I felt that the colors were just a little too drab and muted. Uh, version 5.2 seems to have found a really nice balance between the two. Rolling back to a version 5.1 image from our last video, uh, this was actually one of my favorites. Uh, this was Photograph, style by Cyberpunk, woman with long white hair and combat armor, City Alley, cold, snowing, and an aspect ratio of 16.9. Yeah, I thought this one was really cool. The same prompt in 5.2 returns these images, which if you look at them back to back, um, the 5.2 images are definitely sharper. The skin and hair textures are just a little bit better, and overall the background is slightly more saturated in a very pleasing way. Now what's really interesting in version 5.2 is that the stylized command has a much greater impact. Stylized is one of those things that I've kind of been hit or miss on. So let's take this prompt and crank it up to 10. Actually not 10, it'd be a thousand. So the stylized perimeters go from a hundred to a thousand. So just crank it up to a thousand, even better. So this is the same prompt set to a stylized of 1000 and it definitely is stylized. Like she definitely has had a hairstylist on this photo shoot. To contrast, I ran it again with a stylized of 500, so halfway, and got these results, which is a nice sort of blending of the two. Like she definitely has her hairstylist still on set, but she is still wearing the combat armor from the initial prompt. Well, with the exception of image two, and she should really zip that up. It's cold out there. Additionally, once we've upscaled an image, we now have the ability to vary it either strongly or subtly. So if we hit the vary button on strong, we can swap out the prompt. So let's give that a shot. With our vary on strong and swapping out the prompt to a fall autumn day, we get these images, which is interesting because it really is a hybrid between the cold winter day of our initial image and sort of these background details that are a little more warm and autumnal. The snowy fall day isn't something that really happens in my neck of the woods, but I'm sure if you're watching in like Northern Canada, you're like, oh, look, it's late September. That said, mid journey, always get a mid journey. So the variation on low uh, gives us this, which is just super bizarre. I am 100% not sure what is happening in image number one or image number four. It almost looks like a stack of lawn chairs like covered in the snow and for sure we need to call back her hairstylist from Stylize 1000. All of which is to say, it brings me great joy to know that AI weirdness still exists. Never go away, wonkiness, never. Overall, I think a really good use case for Vary is in something like a product shot. And like, for example, we have product shot, a high-end mountain bike here, uh, and then running a Vary on it and just adding city atmosphere to the back is this image. 
And then swapping that out for forest atmosphere gives us this image. I also have a really interesting very technique coming up in a little bit for characters. You're gonna be interested in checking that out. But let's get into some fun stuff with zoom out because that's really the marquee feature of 5.2. To start with, I'm just gonna roll a very simple prompt of photograph Instagram model. By the way, in version 5.2, Midjourney has stated that they are trying to be better about diversity. And I don't know if you guys knew this, but if you just use the emoji of a country's flag, you will get a character from that country. For example, here uh, I did photograph Instagram model with the flag of Japan, and sure enough, we have Japanese looking characters. I mean, the Instagram model version of Japanese characters, at least. And here we have the same prompt with the Danish flag giving us four Danish looking Instagram models. So upscaling image number two, we now have the ability to zoom out two times, zoom out 1.5 times, or do a custom zoom. Hitting custom zoom brings up a prompt in which we can change the aspect ratio. So in this case, I'm gonna go 16 by nine, and we can choose the amount of zoom. So uh, you can't actually zoom to zero. You would have to zoom to one. One is the default. And that returns these images to us. So yes, this is outpainting, finally. Obviously, we could just leave the aspect ratio exactly as it is is and do a 2x zoom as well or we can take our outpainted 16 by 9 image and zoom that out and what's even crazier is that we can upscale one of these images and continue to zoom out meaning that if you wanted to have some fun with this you could do something like the reddit user zappa did and create a nearly infinite zoom uh, this was done by zooming out on the same image six times and then combining it in after effects and comping it together or you can do something completely insane like at Le Moon Synth, Le Moon Synth, yes. Uh, I mean, look at this. This is completely and totally nuts. It's just fantastic. Um, yeah, so go nuts with Zoom because it is awesome. Another interesting thing that we can do by combining Zoom and Vary is kind of create consistent character scenes. For example, here we have studio photograph, portrait, handsome man, beard, glasses, white background, flat lighting, and an aspect ratio of 2-3. So basically what I'm aiming here for is a portrait of a character with a very neutral background. I'm just gonna completely keep that prompt the same, but change the aspect ratio to 16-9. I zoomed it out by 1.5 to give us sort of a larger frame to work with as well. And then using a strong vary, I changed the prompt to cinematic still, handsome man, beard, glasses in a CIA briefing room, an aspect ratio of 16-9, and we have this scene from, I don't know, some Netflix drama, I'm sure. And then going back to our base character image and changing that out to as a judge on a cooking show gives us this image. It's not perfect, but I think it's the closest that we've come to being able to get a consistent character across multiple scenes. Midjourney has said that this is something that they're working on, so I guess that's maybe something we can look forward to in version six. Also, that looks like a really scary cooking show. Like it looks like cooking with Hannibal Lecter. The last new feature is Shorten, which I actually think, despite the fact that Zoom is really cool, Shorten is actually the one that really excites me the most because it really gives us an insight into how Midjourney thinks. I've mentioned many times, and even in that last prompting video that I did, that long prompts are not your friend in Midjourney. I think those ultra long prompts are a holdover from the early days of stable diffusion before image generators were connected to language models and you really had to spell everything out for them. On the stable diffusion side, it is still used a lot. So I headed over to Leonardo AI to grab a longer stable diffusion type prompt. By the way, if you guys are sleeping on Leonardo.ai, you should really go check them out. They've got a lot of really great tools and I do plan on doing a deep dive into them soon. I found an image that I kind of liked. It's a little on the cheesecakey side, but I don't know, I like the image. Um, apparently I did not know this. Uh, it's it's the prompt is Danielle Van Denonk. And I was like, who is that? She is apparently a a soccer slash football player from the Netherlands. And now here she is as a fantasy pirate. So I'm gonna grab this prompt and take it over to Midjourney's Shorten. So running Shorten is just forward slash Shorten, type in your prompt and then hit enter. It will give you five Shorten prompts. It operates a little bit like described does, but here's the really interesting part. It'll actually give you a fully weighted token summary. That's really, really cool. So as we can see, despite the fact that photograph is way down here in the prompt, Midjourney is actually ranking it extremely high. Whereas of course, as I've mentioned before, things like Octane Render and, you know, 8K and all of that are weighted completely at zero, meaning that Midjourney is completely ignoring all of those. Now, one thing I will say is that 
you will want to make sure to put an aspect ratio in because it does not do so at default. And naturally it returns to us with a dramatically different image. Uh, a lot of that was probably due to the fact that in the original prompt, photorealistic is right there at the top. On the Leonardo side, they were probably using a kind of anime-ish uh, model and that's why the image came out the way it did there. So in that case, uh, Leonardo was actually just ignoring the photorealistic prompt. Out of curiosity, I did grab that Leonardo image, brought it over and ran it as an image prompt, and then used one of the prompts from our shortened command and got these images, which I actually think are really, really cool. It's a really nice blend between the two. And in case you were wondering, indeed, Insight Face Swapper does still work with Midjourney version 5.2. Uh, here is me as Superman. Uh, and then here is Samuel L. Jackson as Superman as well. I accidentally ran him because he was loaded in for another project that I'm working on that's coming up next week. You're not gonna wanna miss it. Uh, do hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. To me, this is the most impressive update since version three to version four, not in terms of image quality, but sort of more overall wow factor. So let me know what you think of version 5.2 and if you've come across any tips and tricks that you'd like to share with us as well. I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.